Late yesterday evening, I received a message summoning my colleagues and I to appear at Mr. Butler's office at 11.30 a.m. and were told that Her Majesty's government had decided its attitude and the course of action it would follow. Mr. Butler would hold a press conference this evening. He would say that any constructive policy in Central Africa must be aimed at working out an arrangement between the two territories of Northern Rhodesia and Southern Rhodesia, which was acceptable to them, and that no territory could be kept in the Federation against its will, and that each would therefore have the right of secession. <coughs> While Her Majesty's Government were reaching their decision on the right of secession, a decision so fundamental to the future of the people in Central Africa, I was in London and available for consultation. I have my own thoughts and suggestions to make on this as on other issues. I was ignored. Sir Roy, you have in effect said that the British Government has presented you with a fait accompli in admitting Northern Rhodesia's right to secede. Are you now prepared to cooperate in devolving federal institutions upon the two Rhodesias? The position is that I am not prepared to cooperate until I get a very clear indication that certain conditions are met. And one of the conditions are, uh, or is, is that I want to see uh, Southern Rhodesia get its right of independence uh, as a country, and secondly, I want to see the rights of both the Europeans and certain, and particularly certain of the African uh, races in Northern Rhodesia, have their rights enshrined and protected. Do you think that uh, you will be able to achieve that? Well, I may not be able to achieve it, but I shall have a, a very good try to do so. And if the British government is not prepared to meet your wishes on this, what will happen? Well, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Thank you very much, Sir Ryan.